To aid Americans in developing a better dietary habits, the government came up with the Dietary Guidelines for Americans in 2010. Um, they are currently uh, still advising these practices. Let's look why we should be concerned with our diet. We know that the following diseases are associated with poor dietary practices. The Dietary Guidelines for Americans, here are some of the recommendations. First of all, you need to balance your calories and manage your weight. You, know, you, you want to be at the weight that's right for you. We want to make sure we put in the right food components in our body to reduce fats and, and the like. Food and nutrients, we, we have to increase the nutrients. We have to make sure we're eating the right food and we have to build healthy eating patterns. That takes a habit, that takes a lifestyle change. And they said healthy Americans will make healthy choices. Balancing calories to manage your weight. First of all, we know if you consume more calories than you actually burn, then you're going to put on fat over a period of time. We want you to manage that. Uh, there are a few people that are overweight and obese because they have other health issues, and we'll cover those later. But for the most part, people are taking in more calories than they're actually using. And as your age, as you continue to get older, you burn fewer calories and therefore need less. You're not growing and, and the like. We want to uh, have you reduce your sedimentary behaviors. We want less time in front of the uh, front of media. We want more time that you getting up and being active. And if you can maintain this balance all the way through, you'll live healthier and feel better. Here's some estimated calories needed for age groups. I just put the, your, your age group on here. Uh, we will actually look and see and, de and determine whether you have sedentary or monetary, uh, moderate or active uh, lifestyle uh, by, by doing a little uh, activity. And uh, you can come up and have a, a kind of an understanding of how many calories you need to have in your diet. Um, here are the, some guidelines for 16 to 17 year olds as far as their activity. As you see here, almost everything says you need to have an hour of aerobic or muscle strengthening or bone strengthening activity at least three days a week. Um, that's really the reason why we've developed, you know, the President's Physical Fitness Test for kids to see how you're doing with that. Uh, that's the reason why PE is mandated in the state of Illinois. We feel it's very important that kids receive some form of activity. And as you go up our little, uh, if you blow this up down below, you can have an idea of what they're looking at, the pyramid. We look at your food components when we we look at this guidelines, and one of the things they say to do is reduce your so sodium intake. We know that sodium is is related to hypertension and high blood pressure, and you need to cut that back. Almost all the foods you purchase out here have a long shelf life or loaded with lots of sodium in it. So, be leery of the label and check how much sodium's in each uh, serving that you're intaking. We also want you to stay away from saturated fats as much as possible, and, and and uh, uh, these are those uh, animal fats or really heavy, you know, heavy stuff. I mean, you could go to McDonald's and get saturated fats all day with the fries that they cook and, and the likes. We want you to consume less than 300 grams of dietary cholesterol a day. I mean, you need some cholesterol, but man, most people get way, mo way more than they need. Um, trans fatty foods, now they're, we're wanting them to put that on the label that they contain those. We want you to limit those those in. We know those are also associated with all these, uh, with possible cancer, possible heart problems. We want you to reduce your intake of all the solid fats and added sugars. There's lots of processed sugar in food nowadays. Lots of lots of uh, caffeine hidden with those too. And then we want you to limit your consumption of refined grains. Your body really wasn't made to eat re refined grain. It was more meant for whole grains. When you add that refined grain, it causes some some retention of water, some swelling, some joint issues. So we'd rather you have a lot of whole grain products. And of course, alcohol, um, if it is consumed after your legal, at the legal age, it should be consumed in moderation. They give you a list of foods and nutrients here that you should increase. 
Now, basically, we, we understand that you're just not, most people are not getting enough fruits and vegetables into their life. And they're not, and if they are, they're eating a very limited number of those. They're not having a good variety of those. So, um, you could pause the screen and look through a lot of these, but that's a real good one right there. If you'll increase the amount of fruits and vegetables in your life, that'll solve several of these here problems. Being healthy and eating patterns, make sure that you start at an early age with kids. You know, a lot of times kids like color, textures. Put in fruits and vegetables, different colors and textures. Start it at a very early age. And then they won't have so much problem. They won't have those, I can't stand to eat this. I'm not going to have the Brussels sprouts, the broccoli. Uh, also follow all the recommendations. And, and, you know, if it says it needs to be refrigerated, refrigerated. If, you know, all these type of things. We want to help you make healthy choices. And we know that we've got to change some so social and some cultural norms and values. I know we get real busy, and it's very easy to stop through the in the fast food line. I'm not saying that I haven't done it periodically myself, but we should limit it as much as possible and try to try to cook meals at home. You know, the, you know, there's things that we can do in which we can store food and, and eat it the next day with Tupperware and the like. So if you have a busy lifestyle, then spend that day of fixing meals and, and prepping them. Um, pay attention to your environmental setting. You're, if you're in an area where there's a lot of stuff going on, where they're eating bad things, donuts and the like all the time, it's hard to keep from doing that. Sometimes you just have to get yourself out of that setting and back away from it. Remember, in the end, there's lots of individual factors that can affect you. So not all of us have the exact same body types and we'll have to watch things better than others. Some people have a natural cholesterol level that's higher than, than normal. So let's watch those things we can. And here's all the things that can influence your actual food intake. And I, I would like for you to pause and take a look at this slide and, and, and see which areas affect you in your life. When we choose uh, myplate.gov, they talk about, you know, making a smaller sa uh, serving of protein in your diet and grains and making sure you're getting a lot more vegetables and fruit. And this is really the size. I mean, if we break, broke our plate in quarters, this is really what it should look like, what percentage of your plate should be in which category. 